Good evening everybody! Today with the help of one of Buckethead's best friends and former Guns N' Roses bandmate Brian Brain Mantia, we're going to take a look back and hear the stories and methods behind some of Buckethead's most famous recordings. So, let's begin. Woo! First up, how the 1992 classic album Transmutation by Supergroup Praxis was recorded. Bernie had a couple ideas, Bootsy had one, I had two or three beats that I wanted to always play with them. Uh, Bucket had a couple riffs and we just recorded all of it. It was just like, hey, you got a, you got a beat? Yeah, okay, we'll go play it. That's your favorite of the Praxis albums? That's my favorite, and that's probably the best thing that I've ever been involved with. If I can have that on my like tombstone, yeah, and be like, what do I, what do I want people to remember me by? It would be that. It makes you want to listen to that album now straight away. Yeah, I still can listen to it, and the crazy thing is, it still sounds like it. It's now. Yeah, it stands up. You know? Yeah, yeah, it stands up. It doesn't sound dated in any way. Yeah. No, it sounds like wow, this could have happened yesterday. Next up, another Praxis favorite from 1994, it's Metatron. Bucket and I now at this point, we're hanging out. He'd come here from LA. He'd come and we'd go to the cemetery every day for like you know, five hours. And you just have the cemetery. <laughs> yeah, we just, that was his thing. And he'd do nunchucks on the, <laughs> all the graves. And we'd watch movies all day. We'd just sit in the studio and watch movies for like... 12 hours and then go get pizza, you know, and then come back, you know, basically just binging. And Bill had called and said, hey, if I send you guys some 24 tracks, will you guys record some stuff? And we were like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. You know, you know, I went to my friend Cookie's in the Bay Area with Bucket and, you know, Bucket brought all his crazy stuff and chainsaws you know, and yeah, hatchets. just all his toys and, and we just jammed. Then we sent it to Bill, and then he added his parts. That album was pieced together like kind of like that. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you guys, I'm just going to send you some tape. Like, it was cool doing it that way because Bucket and I can just do whatever we wanted, and we didn't know yeah. what Bill was going to do. And then when Bill brought it back, we were like, oh, shit, that's so cool. Like, yeah. it was kind of fun not knowing what our tracks were going to turn into. I thought it became a pretty cool album. Yeah, I'd agree. Next up, a holy grail album for Buckethead fans, Giant Robot NTT. Well, Giant Robot was something that we had going for years because of, you know, Bucket being in the Giant Robot. I think he has like five or six of them, uh, like six foot tall Giant Robot dolls. And so Bucket always had that around. We kind of made the Giant Robot album with my um, friend Pete Scaturo, who was the keyboard. And so Bucket, you know, kind of was like, let's do a giant robot album. Let's get Pete because I have all these samples. Pete had just bought the Synclavier, which was like, you know, a $200,000 computer work, you know, Michael Jackson had, you know, so it was like Pete bought one and, you know, it was pretty crazy. That's that giant robot yeah. album, the, the one that we did. Which is a great album. Yeah, I do love that album because of that whole Technology was just getting into that whole sampling thing, and Pete just bought the Synclavier and had all the technology to do all that stuff, so it was kind of cool. Next up, Buckethead and Brain formed the band Pieces and released Buckethead's most infamous album, I Need Five Minutes Alone. So, how did you guys form Pieces? Just like a side project? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, Pieces. It's, oh man, shit, I haven't thought of that one in... Like, it's so random, the album, so ran random noises. Yeah, yeah, I know, I was like, oh, I love that album. Um, It was the same way as Metatron kind of came about. We were just hanging out, and John Zorn had called, I think, Bucket, mm. and said, hey, can you deliver me an album? And I think Bucket was like, okay. And Bucket kept singing this piece, is like, you know, I think there was a movie called Pieces or something, I'm not even <laughs> sure, and so... Pieces... It's exactly what you think it is. Pieces. Absolutely no one under 17 will be admitted. Pieces! 
we went into the studio, which I had this kind of ghetto studio in Berkeley. We'd watch some more movies, eat some pizza, and then record. We'd wake up the next day and watch some movies and then record. And then in the end, we just bunk all pieces. Yeah. <laughs> so why I need five minutes alone? Where did the name come from? I think we were just wearing each other out. And we were both like, dude, we just need five minutes alone. And, you know, it was just like we were with each other for so long. We were just like we couldn't take it. There was no thought behind any of it. It was all just happening in real time. And it just became that the whole album. Next up, the short lived jam band L Stew. So how come L Stew never really took off? Because I know you did, you did like a rehearsal album, then you done another one, No Hesitation, but then it was... Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing, dude, as the Limbos. You know, you get a bunch of characters together that just don't have the same vision. Unless everybody's making a lot of money and you have one head honcho, like a Les or a Lars and Hetfield or an Axel. Yeah. You know, it just kind of... Nobody keeps it together. And it's like, oh, okay, F you, I'm doing this. Like, yeah, you know, Bucket's off doing his own tours, doing his thing. Hey, I'm going to go join, blah, blah, blah. I'm, you know, and disc, I'm F you, you know, nobody gets, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. like you couldn't handle it. So next up, three of Buckethead's most revered albums Colma, Monsters and Robots, and Enter the Chicken. My friend, Extract, we had done Else Do together. He does a little engineering. He does a little bit of everything. Plays his main thing is bass, though. Mm -hmm. So he was like, "Hey, I got some beats." He kind of became friends with Bucket, and he just asked Bucket, "Hey, you know, why don't you just play some guitar on?" And then that became Coma, Monsters and Robots. Sort of was the same thing, but it was just like less. Less was just kind of like, "Hey, let me make an album." You know, made Monsters and Robots for Bucket, and then I think Surge did one, right? Uh, the chicken one or whatever. Yeah, the end of the chicken. Yeah. And we met, we had met Serge on the Ozfest. How was he when you met him? What, what you hear on the albums and what you see, you wouldn't believe it was the same person, mm -hmm. but one of the most intelligent guys I've ever met. And um, us three became friends, you know, so that's how those albums came about. Next up, the stories behind some of Buckethead and Brain's most bizarre off the wall albums. That was another one that we did the same way as Pieces and all that. Yeah, it sounds like... You know, we kind of... Yep, we just we just totally, you know, we're having fun. Kevin's Little House was a sign that we saw as we were driving back from the studio. <laughs> and, we were, you know, we're just like, all right, it's called Kevin's Faux Noodle House. And I was like, sounds great. Uh, another one, Brain is Hammer Noodle. That, that was another one It was because... The ramen was off the uh, off the side of the uh, food truck, <laughs> so it we just caught. Uh -huh. And the guy had put like a H or something on there, and so we were just like instead of ramen, ramen it just said hamen. And yeah, so Bucket was like, "Oh, this is called hamen noodle." We <laughs> we made that album in real time when we went. I went back to the studio that night, and even the one with Melissa, you know, the three of us was all done with like watching movies. We would just go get like the craziest movies and we would just watch them and then play that whole thing in real time. I think we made like a 12 album set yeah. or something. Why was there never a third one? So I remember they kind of announced a third one, but they only ever put two out. Oh, uh, yeah. Kind regards, I think. Yeah. We were supposed to f yeah, I don't think it ever made it. I think at that point we were just all going our separate ways. Next up, Praxis's final album, 2008's Profanation. That was done mainly by Bill. Bucket and I went out, out there and I think we did two or three tracks on it with a bunch of other people. But Bill already had that kind of set up. Didn't like Iggy Pop go on it? Mike Patton? Yeah, Maximum Ball. It was a lot of players. Yeah, that was more just like, hey, come out for two days, do this. And, you know, it wasn't like the other Praxis where yeah, it was it like... it doesn't really feel like a Praxis album, kind of. It feels like a separate project. Yeah, it was more like a Bill Laswell and Friends project, I feel. But it was awesome. Loved it. How about the science faction you did with Bootsy and Bucket? How was that? I don't even remember that. I think that just kind of came out by somebody else taking our stuff and doing it or something. I forget what how that even came about. I don't even know who, is, who it was that did that one. Who was it? I think it was Bootsy. Was it Bootsy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because all I remember is I gave some tracks to somebody and then they pieced it together. I didn't know if, who it was. That wasn't like a Bucket and I thought mm. that one. And last up, Buckethead and Dan Monty's epic Pike album series. We met Dan 
he was the second engineer in the gun stuff. We became friends through that, and then him and Bucket make, you know, all the albums. He's Dan's kind of the, like the master of everything. He, he, he can engineer, he can play bass, guitar, drums. I don't think there's anything he can't do in music. He sings. Because mm-hmm. he's kind of like, like an unsung hero amongst you guys because nobody ever really mentions him, but I know he like does so much. Yeah, he does it all. He, him and P-Sticks are like, you know, they're, they're incredible. But yeah. It was, you know, with them you can't go wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, all those albums he does with Dan are amazing yeah. because, you know, it's whether him. you like it or not, it's him and yeah. he just makes them because he loves it. You know, he just loves it. So, has there any ever been talk to like get you on one of the Pike albums or do like another solo project together? No, I don't know. You know, we talk about it sometimes, and you know, I'm game. If you know, I think it would be awesome if we did a studio album with him and you know, Bucket Dan and I would be awesome. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah.